Uh, who's the? I am the. I am the host. Okay. So it looks recording. We have a couple of members in the audience. Okay. So I'm Kathy Shane, and I am chair of the Elementary School Building Committee, and I'm going to call this meeting to order at 7:32. Um, pursuant to Governor Baker's orders, this meeting is being held with remote participation and virtually, and we will put up the um, Zoom connection for those of you who are listening. Um, I want to call on the people um, on the committee to make sure they can hear me, um, and it's in effect a roll call. So I'm just going to call on the order. This is to make sure you're not just here, but you can hear. Um, so um, I'll do in the order of pictures on my screen, Paul Bachelman. Present. Dwayne Chamble. Present. Anthony Delaney. Present. Steve Schreiber. Here. Mike Morris. Here. Sean McNano. Here. Allison. Hello. And Jonathan Salbon. Good morning. And Rupert. I'm here. I'm calling the meeting to order, um, and I'd, I'm not sure who um, I can put the agenda up. Um, if um, it would be useful to me if someone else could put it up, so I can continue to watch faces. But um, does anyone else have the agenda? Because I did, I do have it available. Seeing no, seeing no volunteer, yeah, I can I can do it, Kathy. Can you do it, Anthony? Thank you. Um, if I can find my there. Yeah. And um, can you make it just a little bit larger? Thanks, Anthony. Um, I also, Anthony, are you a willing volunteer for minutes for today also? Um, we do have a minutes discussion later on the agenda, but I just wanted um, to make sure. I, I can be. I, I, at this point, maybe we should just assume it. Um, okay, that'd this, be great. This won't be, I, I, I want to point out, if we do do a rotating minutes takeout, this won't be forever. This will only be until the OPM is selected and generally the OPM starts taking minutes at that point. So it's not well, a it's not a it lifetime commitment if other people want if we start rotating this. Well, I, I think um, we'll have a, dis a brief discussion on minutes later, but if you're willing to do it today, let's um, okay. do that way. So the agenda is up on the screen. Um, and, um, as I think most people know, if not everyone, um, we did get a letter back from MSBA with enrollment and we have signed the letter. So we have a certified enrollment. And the first item on the agenda is gonna be Mike explaining the contents of that and any discussion about it. And then the next item, and we talked about it in December, is forming a subcommittee for selection of OPM because we're now in the next phase of moving forward. Um, both what, is, what does that subcommittee do? Um, some sense of timeline, how many people? Um, and first a discussion of what it is and then volunteers. And then a group discussion of values that we want to um, look for in an OPM um, that would inform the draft request for proposals and selection criteria. And you can see the rest committee minutes. So I just want to um, right now public comments are put at the end. Um, I think I'll leave them there for today, but I would like a quick discussion of the committee at the end, whether we'd rather move public comments to the beginning of the meeting. Um, and we have some public here, we can, uh, they, they can make a comment on that as well. We, when we seek public comments, it's not a back and forth. We're just gonna be asking for comments and we will take them. So I think with that, Mike, um, I'd like to just turn it over for you to, talk about the enrollment certification we received and um, its implications for us moving forward. Sure, thank you, Kathy. Um, and thanks for everyone being here bright and early. Um, see how to do this succinctly but clearly, that's my goal. Um, and so uh, basically the way the enrollment certification process works is districts can request multiple enrollments to study and MSBA takes that into account and then offers enrollments um, 
that can be studied. And so in this particular instance, um, and I apologize, some of you may have heard this before because I spoke about it last week at a school committee meeting. Um, on behalf of the district, I requested three enrollments. Um, the first enrollment was 420 students at a K to six school, um, just, you know, just dealing with the Fort River school. Uh, the second and the 420 was based on the current Comandante's dual language program and then having one monolingual class as it aged up through sixth grade. That's if you think of three classes per grade level and seven grade levels, um, that's 21 classrooms times 20 students, which is roughly our average, uh, and you get four to 20 students. The second enrollment that was requested was a 520 student um, school, and this would have uh, replace Fort River and Wildwood. So we moved to a two school district as opposed to a three school district. It, it assumed um, that there would be a construction progress process project on the town, the town funded construction project that would have expanded Crocker Farm School. And, um, you know, I think we could, I landed at 520, one could have landed other, but it would have two relatively even sized schools. Something I shared with someone who asked is that, you know, Evenly sized schools are it's a theoretical construct. It's not the reality. If you think of Wildwood and Fort River, those are literally evenly sized, you know, uh, built schools for even populations. Uh, and they've rarely had the same population throughout time. And actually it's Wax and Wayne's where Fort River was a lot larger. Uh, in recent years, Wildwood's been a lot larger. Um, so, so, you know, I just, I have to take the evenly sized pieces with a grain of salt, but it would add two more similarly sized schools. And the last one is, would have been the 600 student K to five consolidated school. So taking Wildwood and Fort River offline and having the sixth grade move to the middle school. Um, and so those were what were requested. Uh, you know, we had multiple conversations, Paul Bachman was involved, uh, Nate Molloy from the planning department because they had a lot of questions about future growth in the town because they're trying to take that into account as they think about this. Um, and then at the end, you know, what we received back was two enrollments that we were permitted to study. Uh, and they neither were exactly what we requested. And, and I think I can walk, walk folks through and, and Kathy and Paul certainly can jump in in terms of the conference call that we shared uh, on this topic with the MSPA. Uh, the two top two enrollments they certified for us were 320 students, uh, K to six at Fort River. The reason they felt 320 was a better number than 420 uh, not better, was the number they were willing to certify, um, was that they look at district-wide capacity and enrollment. So the fact that we have a dual language program is they care about it, but that's something that's sorted out in the feasibility study, what you do programmatically. This is purely about capacity. And when they looked at our expected student enrollment and they looked at the capacity of all three of our elementary schools, uh, they concluded that 420 students was too large. We would have excess space, excess classrooms in the district and on a factual basis, I will say, you know, I understand where they're coming from. It does create some programmatic challenges for us. But again, that's, as they emphasize, that's what you do in feasibility when you're writing an educational plan. But uh, they express multiple times that they are, they are, uh, have to be respectful and conscious that they have many districts in the pipeline, many districts trying to get in, and they can't uh, approve a project that builds excess capacity for one district when other districts uh, don't have that opportunity. So that's how they landed at 320. It wasn't a knock against a dual language program. They actually are quite fond of that and interested in that, uh, but they can't utilize that to build uh, five more classrooms essentially than what would be required from a district-wide capacity perspective. The second enrollment they certified was 575 students uh, for K to five. Um, school that would take Fort River and Wildwood offline and so that we would end up with two schools. So one distinction is in, in option A, we still have three elementary schools in Amherst and option B, we have two elementary schools in Amherst. Um, and, you know, basically the difference in 575 and 600 was how they looked at our enrollments over time and projected enrollment. It wasn't, you know, uh, they came up with the lower number at first actually, and then we discussed, we discussed our class size policy, which is quite a bit lower than the average in Massachusetts. Uh, our elementary classes are, are, have more, fewer students than the average elementary class in Massachusetts, and that has implications for a building project. And I want to thank them for being flexible and understanding that our local policies of the, of the elementary school committee uh, dictate class size policy that is different from their norm. Um, so that's how we landed at 575. In terms of the middle option, 
uh, they expressed really clearly that um, if we wanted, if we being the town wants to do something about Crocker Farm, that that that's the town's discretion. But at this point, they're ready to roll. They've been they've been in the process with us. They're back in the process with us. And if we're not sure, and by not sure they mean don't have, um, in Crocker Farms' case, committed funds and a decision made that there's an expansion, then we should drop out of the program and reapply when we have all of our ducks in a row and all of our commitments made on that one. Uh, in terms of six weeks in middle school, they're aware that that's a vote of two committees um, that doesn't require funding. We shared all of our external reports with them, the Crocker Farm expansion report and renovation, the Fort River process. Obviously they had the Wildwood, uh, all those reports on hand, as well as our, um, you know, looking at sixth grade to the middle school report. So they, they had all the information uh, that we had to give. They know we're well positioned in terms of information. They, I think they quipped that we have more information than almost any other district they've ever worked with who's at this stage in the process. And that's a good thing, right? That's going to help us as we move forward. Um, so that was the rationale for approving only two enrollments and at the numbers they stated. Um, at that point, the chair of the school committee, the president of the town council, myself signed off on the enrollment. Um, it's not really a negotiation at that point in time. Um, it was one additional document uh, that we had to just say how we were going to, you know, that we had approved, the, the, the town had approved the funding for the feasibility um, and just, you know, a rough ratio of how we anticipated being spent between the OPM, the designer and some other costs. Uh, and the really good news from my perspective is we got a confirming email. I think it was yesterday, um, but Kathy, it's been a, it's been a, it's, the fact is Wednesday morning is surprising to me. So, um, uh, but we got a, a letter that confirmed that uh, we are slated to be, everything's off to MSBA legal and we are slated to be on the February 11th board meeting uh, to fingers crossed, be invited into the feasibility study, uh, which is a good thing. The last thing I think I'll share as an update and then I'll stop and take questions or comments is that uh, at that board meeting, I know I'll attend, I think Kathy you know, said that she would attend and, and perhaps others will as well. It's a virtual meeting, so it makes it quite easy to attend. And assuming a positive vote of that meeting, Kathy and I will have an orientation uh, and Paul, if he's able, um, on the next phase in terms of um, designer OPM selection, de designer selection. And they said, based on their process and their timeline, we should anticipate um, a June or July finalization of hiring an owner project manager. So in their timeline, that's what it takes. They did, and we'll talk about this because it's on the agenda. They did encourage us to start that process in the way that Kathy has designed the agenda so that we're ready to go because everything needs to be submitted weeks ahead of uh, not just MSV board meetings, but for their, so, you know, their support in terms of that selection. So I think we're well poised to, to keep on hitting the milestones we need to keep hitting to be on track for this process. And, um, you know, I think that's uh, as quick a summary as I could do of all that information. So I apologize, not maybe the most exciting, but uh, hopefully I hit all the key points. I don't know if Kathy and Paul had other things to share from when we met with the um, MSBA about the enrollment certification, but that, that's looking back at my notes, that's what I've got. Um, Paul, do you have anything you want to add? No, I think that was a really good summary. I think they were, um... They're very supportive of our, they rec They know the building, they know Fort River, they understand the needs. Um, they're very supportive of the process. They wanted us to succeed, which was very, and they saw themselves as partners with us. Um, but that being said, they also recognize their larger responsibility to the Commonwealth and all the other schools that are, you know, in, in the district that, that are in their line um, waiting for funds. So I think, um, I think the town is well positioned, as Mike said, to move forward. And I think they they work in a very deliberate process and they give you your dates well in advance and if we have the opportunity to hit those dates and so it's good to see these dates laid out going forward and what we have and what when we'll hit their meeting dates they only meet every other month so if we miss a meeting date it's a it's a problem for us so we don't want to do that uh yeah the uh, only i i just would add um two other things we heard on the call um we asked, um, Mike asked any advice or coaching advice going forward. And the one answer was communicate um, at every step of the way. Uh, so one of my questions for today is, should we, the committee, should the school committee, should the council put out some brief statement about the enrollment, you know, the decision? And I have to write something up for the council. So it could be as part of the council report, but just so townwide people know that 
the the ball is starting to roll, you know, and this is, and these are the implications. That that was one. And then when um, Mike said the June or July, us moving with OPM, they gave us, it wasn't just a little bit in advance, but I think, you know, to be on, on the agenda for June, we have to be ready by the end of March or, you know, and, and end of April for July. So it means we need to be very focused on the OPM process of uh, getting getting that process moving and doing it efficient efficiently if we want to make the June or July decision thing you know so I was to me it was like whoa they when they say a few weeks before they didn't mean like you know two weeks before they meant really before to get on their agenda um, so those were the two other things and we did push pretty hard about on the the three models that Mike had submitted and their answers were, as he said, you know, if we had put money on the table for Crocker expansion, then then yes. But if we're not ready to do something, they they would be asking us to come back. Um, similarly, you know, on, on a couple other questions that we had. So so they um, not just were uh, they were totally enthusiastic. They were cheerleaders. You know, you're going to have a new school. This is wonderful. <laughs> You know, we're here to help you. So it was a uh, green lights on folks. Mike. Yep, just to clarify one thing I think uh, they were saying and, they, and I think I should have said it earlier that um, the OPM doesn't go back to the full board. It goes to something called an OPM review panel. Uh, it's the same idea. They don't meet all the time. They're not on the beck and call. They, they meet on every, you know, I don't know how, exactly how often, but with regularity. Um, but if, we're, if, if anyone's looking at board dates, that's the wrong dates to be looking for. It's, an, it's uh, I think it's literally called, yeah, the OPM review panel. Um, and so, um, you know, those are certainly open meetings, but that's the, what we need to hit is um, the dates for that group. Um, and, and I can read them out loud. Actually, I have them here. Um, if it's actually, you know, what might be helpful is if, I think I'm allowed, am I allowed to share my screen on this one? I, th I think so, as long as whoever's host allows us. <laughs> See if it lets me, yeah. I'm gonna share my screen. It may be hard to read, but I'll email, when this meeting ends, I'll email uh, this date out because it actually lays out the June and July dates and exactly what submissions need to be when. Um, so let me. Yep, you're doing is it. That, is that large enough for people to be able to read? You can somewhere? adjust your, people can adjust their own screens. Okay. Um, but you know, when they're talking about June or July, it means the add-in, if we want to hit June, which I'm always pushing for the sooner, right? Um, you know, that means add in the register March 25th, um, you know, appears on the 31st, applications due by April, receive the MSBA by May, um, the full package um, by May 26th. And having gone through this before, um, it's, uh, you know, I think we want to be ahead of those dates because the tail end of those uh, can get, you know, challenging in terms of scheduling the interviews and all that. But, you know, uh, this document probably lays out um, the dates that we need to hit to check off the boxes so that we could be in June or July for that review panel. I hope that's helpful. Yeah, that's um, very helpful, Mike. And if you send it to me, I we can make sure we both post it and everyone has it. Um, we, we are starting, we, as every, I think everyone here knows, there is now a web page. It will get more organized once OPM comes on with lots of sections, but we're posting all of this material in packets. Paul? So two things. One, on, on that one, I think we should say, decide today what, what meeting we are targeting as a committee. We should say, we want to hit the June meeting and then start to talk about what does it mean to get there. Um, and then secondly, in terms of your communication piece, um, Kathy, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, if you are gonna draft up something for the council, we can take that and we can put that out through the town and through the school communication networks so everybody can hear it. So I think if you wanna take that first crack at it, um, if you're planning on doing that anyway, that might be a good first step. And I, I would, I'm planning on making sure I share the draft so that um, mm -hmm. it, it uses the words that all of us can be using, you know, um, right and be, be careful about it, to be both careful, but also clear, you know, mm -hmm. so people don't read in between the lines something that's not there. All right. right. So I think so that- Does I it think, make sense to choose a date, the yeah, meeting I, we I, want to end? 
I think that uh, to me, it does. Mike, anyone else? Yeah, I just want to give people, I said a whole awful lot in the beginning and we never, I, we all just, you know, yeah. had a lot to share. I just want to make sure that the committee has a chance to ask questions, go backwards and ask any questions on stuff I said. I think I, I agree with Paul's, your suggestion about drafting something, Kathy, thank you for doing that. And Paul's about choosing a date, but I just want to make sure if there's questions in the committee, they get an opportunity to Thank you, Mike. Talk about stuff that's not just those two things. Thank you for a very gentle but clear reminder. So I'm looking at all the faces. You know, I, I think we're small enough. Jonathan, just raise your hand this way rather than the hand thing. Jonathan. Unmute myself. I just just for clarity, Mike, what was the grade configuration on the, the larger uh, population that were permitted to, to study? So it was there uh, one. Yep. So it's K to five on the larger population and K to six on the uh, Fort River only 320 student. Um, and, and, and I think just to highlight that this came up at a Amherst school committee meeting last night or the joint part, I forget. It was, it was, uh, there were multiple parts of my school committee life last night. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, trying to think of how to engage people on that particular question, whether that sits in this body or that body or some combined body or between the Amherst and the region, um, is something that we'll have to sort through over the next few weeks. Other questions, comments? I'm not seeing anything. So I know um, I actually didn't watch the first school committee, Mike, when you presented this, but uh, the school committee members uh, quickly jumped to that and said, oh, so this means, you know, if we're, if we're down to two schools, if we're going to do just two rather than three, it means the sixth grade is moving. We better folk, we, we should be starting to focus on that. So it is, it has a clear curriculum implication. Um, anyone else? So I guess, um, so let's go, the next item is to talk about the formation of a subcommittee that would be part of the OPM selection and Paul's, um, and timeline. So Paul's suggestion that we aim for June, which would mean that the paperwork on this has to be in no later than March 25th, according to what um, Mike just, is everyone comfortable and is that, it, set, trying to set that is the goal? Yeah, I don't see anyone going no. I mean, it's a tight goal, clearly, because we're not going to be invited. The invited in happens on February 11th. And meanwhile, Anthony is starting to draft everything, <laughs> you know, but we're not. It's, yeah. Anthony? It, it, uh, this is a much, selecting an OPM for this is much simpler than when we tried to do the feasibility study at Ford River. It's it's a very defined document. We're really just filling in blanks. So assembling the the RFS, the request for services, um, will not be an arduous process for us. Mike? And I'm glad to hear that. I think just the one thing to be aware of is anything that gets done in this process needs to be vetted and approved by MSBA. So whatever timeline you see there, you have to back up. And, and what's maybe not as explicit in that timeline is that it needs to be submitted. MSBA legal needs to take a look before it ever hits the register, central registry or whatever it's called. Anthony, sorry, I'm not. Mm -hmm. As you know, as you've learned well, I'm not. I'm not uh, well well versed in uh, uh, procurement jargon. Um, but um, just, I think, just I'm glad to hear that because I do know that there's going to be a delay on the other end because anything we do along that step needs to get the check from uh, from Boston there before it goes out. Okay, so do you want to say a little bit about the um, role of the OPM, our subcommittee to do the OPM, um, because the next step after that role is looking for volunteers to be on it. Um, you know, it's a subcommittee of our committee that would be uh, not just working with the RFS, but also I'm assuming doing um, to the extent we do background references, you know, finding out about the entities that submit pieces would be doing that. So you want to talk a little bit about that, Mike, Anthony, anyone who's been through this before? Anthony, do you want to start or would you like yeah. me to start? Yeah. So um, the first role of such a subcommittee would be to, to work with me on actually drafting the um, request for services, which again is, is mostly a fill in the blanks exercise. I'd be looking for people to fill in background information on uh, the goals of the process and perhaps why we are 
looking for certain specific things uh, unique to this district um, and maybe a little bit of history on previous projects because I only came in after uh, after uh, after the Fort River uh, study, uh, individual project started. Um, so that's not a very arduous thing, although at least some people on the committee, subcommittee should probably have some specific knowledge there. After that, um, the, yeah, we get into interviewing the OPM. Um, are people currently, is MSBA still having people travel for that, Mike, or that's all remote right now? So we can probably assume it will still be remote. We won't have to travel to Boston for those things. Um, and uh, yeah, doing reference checks uh, that could be delegated to one person that could be split up among multiple people. Um, I think that's, think that's the main stuff on my end. Anything else, Mike? Mike? Yeah, yeah so uh, I'll send over a document to the Catholic chair of the committee. It's, it's pretty dense from MSBA, but it's about the process as well. And, you know, um, I think I think a couple things to back up with what Anthony said, you know, why do we need an OPM? The OPM is a support for the town and the committee uh, throughout the rest of the process. So, you know, whether or not literally building the building, they are essentially the vetting agency that we have to control costs, to make sure the products that we're receiving is good, um, as Anthony noted, to lovingly take notes. So it's no longer Anthony or someone else's uh, responsibility, uh, but there are go-to people and uh, it's a really critical role in my experience. So, you know, the short story is Anthony will do a lot of the front end piece um, with the OPM. It does need to be advertised in the central registry for at least two weeks. We may want to do it more than that. That'll be a decision that we want to talk about. Uh, in typical times, there'd be an informational meeting and a site inspection. We might just be an informational meeting for interested vendors. You know, Sean, you were involved in that last time. We had pretty good turnout um, last time with people who want to know more about the project. They want to understand what the goals of this committee and the town are. Um, so that when they're doing their applications, more or less, um, they're providing their documents, they're really clear uh, on what the aims are and what we're looking for, which really dovetails to the next agenda point, Kathy. But, you know, I think that's why it's so critical that on the front end, we're clear on what we value and what we're looking for so that uh, we're being transparent about that with the potential vendors. Um, once we get those, um, we'll take all, all available information into account. Uh, there's a ranking process for people who are on that subcommittee uh, that is sh a shortlisting. Um, each of the shortlisted respondents are invited for a presentation to interview by that subcommittee. And, um, you know, you're looking for, can they do the job? Can they meet the schedule? Uh, do they have the key personnel to be able to do that? Um, there's a reference check process at the tail end of that. Um, all the references need to be checked for everyone who you interview. It's not just, I like this person. I'm only going to check references for that person. Uh, again, it's very, very formal um, structured process as Anthony described. Um, and then the shortlist of candidates would be ranked, you know, so you're ranking all the people who apply. You're interviewing the people who you shortlist. You do references for all those people. Um, there's rankings. Um, for those people, you need to retain those because they may be requested by the MSBA. Uh, you need to have a rationale for why you rank them the way you did. Uh, again, this, there's a lot of forms and a lot of those pieces. Um, and then it goes to, as I said, the uh, MSBA's owner project manager review panel. Um, and you do have to justify why it is that you're choosing, wanting the, or choosing the vendor if you want to. Uh, and then you have to come to a contract agreement based on fees. Um, and so, so it is a cumbersome process. We're so lucky to have Anthony here to walk us through the technical parts of it. Um, and, um, and so that it, it's a lot of work. And, you know, for me, in my opinion, it's really important work because it will uh, directly influence the entire rest of the project, including parts of the project I haven't been to, but talking to my colleagues who have, you know, through construction, um, and commissioning and all those pieces. So uh, it's a little bit of a slog to be honest with you, but you know, if we do this right and get the right vendor, the rest of the process will work much more smoothly. Sorry for again, being long-winded this morning, but I just wanna make sure I'm giving the lay of the land. Well. Um, so how, what is the time commitment that you anticipate for people who are going to volunteer to serve on this group? 
uh, and does once they make a decision on uh, an OPM or a group of three OPMs, do they come back to this full, the entire body to say, here's what we want, and then it goes to the MSBA from this body? Do you want to take that, Anthony? Uh, so the time commitment for the drafting of the RFS, I would think would only amount to three or four hours, probably, probably one or two subcommittee meetings where we actually review it and then probably a fair bit of, okay, can you draft this part? Can you supply some language for this? So I would think five or six hours grand total that might be too, that might be too uh, more than, that might be high. Um, then in terms of interviews, that's probably uh, a day or maybe two half days, depending on, on scheduling, I would think. Um, no, uh, then however long it takes to actually finalize a list. So a couple more subcommittee meetings there. Um, so yeah, so the actual selection is probably, so it'll be spread out, but it would probably be the equivalent of, of a couple, two, three days, I would think. That's basically what it was on Fort River. Mike? Like, yeah. I, I'm sorry, yeah. I don't call on people. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I'll take it wherever it comes from. Uh, no, I would guess, you know, in my head about 20 hours. Right. Uh, for Anthony, he can read, get these proposals and probably roll through them because he's used to this process. For people like me, uh, when I got, you know, last time when we got proposals, whether it's this or the designer, um, they're pretty lengthy. They're not like like a two page resume. Right. Um, and so, you know, I don't know Sean was also in that role last time. I, you know, it took a lot of time to read through those. Uh, I think I agree with everything Anthony said on the other parts, but I, I don't want to minimize how much if we get eight applications. For me, it wasn't like I could read them in 10 minutes and know what I was talking about. It really had to dig in. Um, I see Sean has his hand up as well. Yeah, sure. I see Sean. Yeah, I'd say it's probably, you know, a pretty busy couple of weeks when you're reading the proposals and then when you're doing the interviews. Mike's right. The, the proposals for both the OPM and the designer can be pretty lengthy. Um, and it's important to have a good sense of how you're going to rank them because you know, when you're reading through these, they all pretty much say the same thing and you're trying to piece out like what separates one OPM from another OPM. And, you know, what you're really looking for is, did they read what you said? And are they, you know, are they res being responsive to what the district is looking for? You know, some people will submit cookie cutter uh, proposals that are just standard and others you can, you'll be able to tell that they really took a, took time to understand the, the district and the community. Um, but, it, but it is sort of a, a time consuming process to piece that out because it's, a, you know, they're all very colorful. They're all very nice and professional. Um, and you're really sort of looking for like the little teeny details that you can, you can kind of, you know, justify your ranking based on those. So it, it's, it's a little arduous when you do that part of it. Yeah, I, I agree. I did forget how much reading there is. That is definitely true. So I have a question, Sean, because I haven't been through this process, but I have been, through um, on behalf of a federal government on a grant grant selection and where they were big grants on ranking, we often had pre-decided on some ranking criteria and even given it points. You know, so so it was a reader's guide then to to reading the application. Did it have this or that? Um, and and very well done. So did you do do? Have you done anything like that, or is it more a verbal what you're looking for? So normal procurements are like that. Anthony, is it is that something that's already set in the RFS? What the criteria will be? It is all. It is already set, and it is largely predefined what the criteria are. I could. That's okay. I could show it if uh, if we wanted. No, well, that, that's not germane to this particular discussion. But well, yeah, you know, it, it's defined. I totally agree. I mean, it was just really useful to have that when reading something. So as you said, you know, look beyond the, the boilerplate for, you know, what someone said. So anyone else a uh, question on what this subgroup does? Um, Paul. So the question is, does it come back to the full body before it goes to MSB or not? Um, my recollection is yes. Um, and even if it doesn't technically lead to, which MSBA will, will brief Kathy and myself on, I believe it should. 
you know, I don't think there's anything that precludes it. But Sean, do you remember from last time? I felt like it did come back. I thought we brought back the, so there, my recollection, unless it's changed, which it could have changed, is that there's, there's sort of a narrative that you have to complete that shows, you know, your process, how many you received, how many you shortlisted, um, you know, the rankings. And I think you mostly just bring back the shortlist and, and that's what um, the OPM review board sort of looks at. And then there's some sort of back and forth process. I have to refresh my memory um, around the negotiation of it. Um, Cause I think we set a fee, but I'll, I'll have to double check. And then there's, there's a little bit of a negotiation around that. So um, yeah, I, I believe it does come back to the, this commit, this group first before it goes off to the MSBA just to, to take a look and, and we can explain or the, the subcommittee can explain how they got to that short list. I, I also think even if that isn't a required step, I think it's an important step because our meetings will be posted in advance. So we need to set up a meeting to make sure that happens. And that'll be the um, broader public knowing that we're getting to that point, um, you know, and there are 13 of us. So it's also just a healthy weighing in. Yeah, Paul? Yeah, the subcommittee means are public meetings as well. No, I, I know they're public. I'm just saying that it means that you don't have to go to every meeting of the subcommittee. Mm -hmm. You can know that it's going to come back to this meeting. I, I, I mean, there, there are some people that actually, I think, love to watch all the meetings that we're doing on committees, but there are others that would like some uh, reader's guide to tune in for this one. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a biggie or... <laughs> Yeah. No, I realize everything is public and it's really been very helpful for those of you who have, haven't seen it with Zoom, the town has been really quite fast and getting faster on posting the videos, the Zoom videos. So if you couldn't be to a particular meeting, you can watch it um, and it's happening for sub any of our public meetings that are held under Zoom. So I, I think um, with that uh, background, um, it's uh, people volunteering to be on um, the subcommittee. And um, what I heard is we need, um, ideally we, we need Anthony on it, but we need someone who's been through this before. So that history section um, and uh, Mike. So just on a, the kinds of people we need, and then I'm just gonna ask for who would like to be on it. Um, I'm, I'm going to be volunteering to be on it because I think I need to go through this step. So I'm assuming I will be on it in some way. Um, this Dwayne, yeah, I would definitely like to be on it, you know, fully immersed in the project. And it seems like this is going to be a big piece of it. So I want to jump right into it and jump into the fire. Okay. Uh, uh, Steve, Steve's hand was up also. I just... Yeah, yeah, I wasn't sure if I was supposed to use a digital hand, but I, I'll volunteer. I would, I would um, like to be part of this if that's possible. Okay, I saw Paul. You put your hand. Uh, Jonathan's hand is up. I'm just looking. I'm looking yep. around. Yeah, I'll do I, it. I just want to say I definitely do not want to be on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jonathan. Sorry, <clears throat> got to unmute myself. I certainly am glad to participate. I can bring some of the history, at least about the, the last uh, project. And I certainly have been on the opposite side of the procurement process. Uh, um, and that might or might not be helpful, but I'm also willing to step aside for, for, for new folks if, if, if the larger group uh, wants different folks. Um. So um, I'm looking at Mike and Sean just on a, you went through it with the Wildwood project and then you've been, you know, sort of the, the long history of, of Amherst on elementary schools. Do, do, would you want to be serving on this Mike or is that added to a workload that already is a big workload? Yeah, I mean, I, I wanted to make sure there was someone from the schools on there. The fact mm -hmm. that Dwayne, thank you, Dwayne. Uh, volunteered uh, for that. I, you know, I, I shift my opinion because um, Dwayne is is 100% uh, trust him to bring the the best interest of the schools forward. But I think your point about past history is okay. So I don't know how Sean feels about this. Um, uh, and I'm not his supervisor, so I will not jump in at any point to, to pressure Sean. But but I, I think your the point's well taken about the. Um, having some history, but you know, the flip side of that is also true that maybe it's better to have some people who weren't part of 
the the prior process um you know to have a fresh eye because likely a lot of the same people will reapply um i think that you know there's a, a finite number of opms in the area uh, a finite number of opms who are going to apply for a project in western massachusetts so i could look at that question either way but you know certainly if, if the committee feels like i need to be then then or should be then i'll do it but having Dwayne involved makes me feel more relaxed and i know that was coming so thank you Dwayne. So right now I have um, Dwayne, Steve, Jonathan, Kathy, Anthony, um, which is one, two, three, four, five people. And we're a group of 13. So um, five is a good number. Sean is raising his hand and Anthony's raising. It's Sean first, then Anthony. Yeah, I was going to just say, I think that's a good number. I don't think you'd want to go much bigger than that. Um, and I, I'm fully confident in Anthony to kind of guide the procurement side of it. Um, the history, I think, is mostly important for filling out the RFS narrative, which he'll get a lot of that information from the schools anyway. Um, and, you know, we, I can certainly help, you know, work with him if there's any questions about what happened last time. But I, I think that's a good number. Okay, so I, I think we have our subcommittee, unless uh, any other hands going up. Um, this actually, uh, the fact that there aren't 13 uh, pictures on this, I can kind of scan it to see hands, which is good. Um, so I think that Paul, yeah, I, I was just going to say if there was some, if you needed someone else from the schools or, or, or Sean or, you know, who's been through it before, I was thinking, Kathy, you could serve sort of ex officio by, right? you know, just as chair, cool. be at all the, so that's just another option, but it becomes a very large group then, you know, so no, I don't I, know what the, what the, op the optimal number for this subcommittee group. I think we did three last time, um, is my recollection from the last time we did this, but, but it's also, I don't think five is noted, you know, noticeably different. Um, okay. Yeah, Anthony. Yeah. We had five on the Fort River one and, and that worked fine. So we weren't selecting an OPM, we were selecting a designer, but that worked fine. That's all. Okay. Um, you know, I just don't, you know, t to the extent there's a section that you want other readers of some, you know, for the RFS to read it, I'm sure we will share, you know, so, you know, school committee, this doesn't have to be uh, only this closed out in a huddle and at the end of it, you see the results. Um, so the, on terms of values, uh, I um, wanted to open it up for a discussion of the types of uh, values, skills, experience, Paul. Should we should we make a motion on this committee? Oh, okay, so sure, let, we can. This is good. <laughs> keep keep Kathy in a more formal. <laughs> okay, so I am. I will make a motion that we uh, form a subcommittee um, for the OPM selection that includes. Um, and I'll do the last names later, so I don't have to do Dwayne, Steve, Jonathan, Kathy, and Anthony. Um, is there a second to the motion? Second. Um, I guess wait, I need, wait a minute. Do I need to do? A, I should do a roll call vote since we can't just do a show of hands. Correct. You should. Yes. Okay. So I will go. If there are any further comments um, or discussion. Okay. Then I will go um, through the screens as I see them. Paul. Yes. Kathy's a yes. Dwayne. Yes. Anthony. Hi. Steve? Yes. Mike? Yes. Sean? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Rupert? Yes. Ben? Yes. The motion passes unanimously of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people who are here. So there are several absent. We'll, we will do this formally in the minutes to show who who voted and who was not here at the committee. Good. Steve. Uh, so can I ask a question now that we have, I guess, an official subcommittee, what happens if we're contacted by directly by potential applicants? So people that we think might be putting themselves forward. Mike? Um, this will happen throughout the process, like, you know, like there'll be, you know, construction professionals, all that. 
my advice uh, would be that all communication to potential vendors go through the chair and everything's, I, I don't mean to add work to your plate, Kathy, but I think if there's one central person who's doing any communicating, uh, which is probably not that much in this particular instance, but um, that, that it all filters to the chair so we don't have people doing side communication with vendors um, outside the process. So that'd be my recommendation for the group. Anthony? Um, I would volunteer to be the person that that communication goes through. I'm actually already getting a fair number of emails from OPMs and currently I'm just telling them to watch the committee page. But since I'll be the person posting the documents and I'll know where to direct people, I might suggest that yeah. that communication goes through me. I think yeah. that's good. And then, you know, to the extent anything comes directly to me as chair, I will just say um, I'm copying Anthony because he's handling all of these. So I can do something short and very short and sweet um, to indicate that it didn't go into a black hole. Um, okay. So, any other questions before we talk about values? Um, I'm not seeing anything. Okay. Um, any thoughts on? The value discussion. I'm going to share a screen because I I jotted down some notes last night. Um, let me make sure I. Here we go. And this is meant to be super rough draft, um, and uh, I'll make it as big. Is that big enough so people can see it? Yes. Okay, so I just, uh, this was off the top of my own head. I shared it with Mike. He said, looks about right and made one comment that I wasn't quite sure how I should change, but I changed it a little bit with his comment. But I, I'll just go through the um, tenor of it is strong experience that we want to know that um, they've had a lot of experience with school building projects, including recent elementary schools. Um, Ideally, since we're going to do a zero net energy, that it, they at least know what that is. Um, experience with MSBA. Strong references, I think, goes without saying, um, but I'd like to make sure we check through multiple layers of experience having worked with them. The excellent communication skills, I think it's both listening well and communicating clearly with us and with the public, um, but knowing something about their style, their methods of communication would be good. Um, analytic and willing to able to push back. I didn't know how to write this, but I don't, I think if, if there are competing ideas or alternative ways of going about things, they need to flush that out and explain consequences so that they don't just go with the flow, but they can be, wait a minute, do you really wanna do this and talk, to, talk back to us as needed. Well-organized and flexible um, with time to support the committee, they're gonna be doing, creating website material for us um, to provide easy access, set and hear clear timelines. And then the last, but I shouldn't say least, is some that they believe in public engagement, that they really have a strong commitment to outreach public at key junctures. Um, and any materials they've used are clear. Um, and I find some are better than others. That was just, those were six larger value opt votes that occurred to me. Um, so. I'm willing to add, subtract, do anything, but this was, I thought, instead of having a blank slate, something to work off of would be great. Anthony. Uh, would you like me to share the default criteria uh, in the MSBA's OPM selection? I'm sure. So maybe, maybe first get any reaction to this, or maybe do that, Anthony, and then Steve. So, yeah. No, I was going to comment on yours, but it, whatever order you want to do. Um, well, would it be, let me ask the committee, would it be helpful to see the default having just more or less, this is, this is clearly not rocket science of what I did. Um, keep that in your memory. You want to see, let's, let's look at Anthony, let's look at default. So do I stop share or does that? I think, I think I can just take over. Let's see. <laughs> 25th amendment. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> no, not that. It's the wrong word. Uh, it says milk, eggs, um. Okay, new share. Got too many windows open. Mm -hmm. 
That's why. There it is. Okay. So uh, the MSBA form has minimum criteria and then comparative criteria. So the minimum uh, is laid out first and uh, they have to designate a project director who uh, is a registered architect with the Commonwealth who has at least five years experience or uh, seven years experience in construction or supervision of construction. And then the real meat of it is the comparative criteria. Anthony, can you just explain the difference between minimum and comparative real quick for people on the committee? So uh, the minimum criteria will be, uh, if they don't meet it, then we basically can't consider them. If, if they don't have the whatever we set as a minimum, the required experience, then it's don't pass go. We don't, we don't really consider them further. There's not really any discussion or weighing them. They're not qualified, so they don't, they, 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 they're not considered further. Whereas evaluation criteria are comparative and they'd be weighed. Firm A has more experience, uh, but does a lot of change orders. Firm B is less experienced, but has higher review scores from previous projects. Uh, so it's not a simple thumbs up, thumbs down on the evaluation criteria. Um, and the evaluation criteria are past performance, uh, including uh, completion time, dollar value, and number of change orders, uh, safety, uh, fines, their relationship with the, both the owner and the contractors and the MSBA, uh, thorough knowledge of building code, ADA, and other local regulations, uh, thorough knowledge of procurement laws, in, um, including uh, construction management at risk if we go that way, um, description of their management approach, um, the qualifications of the people they identify as key personnel, and how much time they are devoting to the project and their experience, their capacity to take on the project and relevant skills, their ability to, uh, uh, so their other workload and uh, whether they'd be able to take on this project in addition to their current. Uh, familiarity with green building codes such as uh, LEED or other or CHIPS or other. Um, experience with the life, uh, life cycle cost analysis, cost estimating and value engineering. Um, their stability. Uh, we would probably add uh, criteria regarding zero energy experience uh, and uh, other other things, but that is the that is the default setup in a in a blank request for services. Uh, Sean and, and, and Jonathan next. Yeah, Anthony, you may have mentioned this, but um, I was reading and it kind of reminded me. An important piece of this will be weighting all of those, um, you know, determining what's the most important and sort of prioritizing that. Um, you know, it's not it's not super intuitive. You know, what's the most important? So you really kind of got to go through each one of them and kind of think about your values for for the OPM. Yep. Uh, Jonathan, you had your hand up. Yeah, I'm. I'm. My question is more uh, to what extent does the process allow us to um, uh, edit or add to that list, Anthony? Um, or are we, is that a basic setup that, that comes with, with, with the approval process from the state? Uh, we, so the instructions part of the form says, uh, owner should designate points to each criteria listed below doesn't I don't see specific instructions on adding them, but I believe uh, I believe with MSBA's approval, we can add uh, evaluation criteria. I guess I would have to double check on that, but I, be I believe we can. It would be surprising to me if we couldn't add certain evaluation criteria that are not uh, very specific to 
our needs, like especially zero, zero energy is the big one for me. Right. Um, that's, that's the one I'm thinking about and how, how to frame that and, and how to get, make sure we're getting applicants that, that um, have as much experience in that as possible. Yeah. Thank you. Um, any other, Steve, you had your hand up when my. Yeah, it's back up. It's back up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and I, I guess one concern is always to have criteria, criteria be so specific that you'll have a pool of zero or a pool of one. Like in other words, experience with net zero elementary schools in Massachusetts, you know, et cetera, et cetera, all of a sudden gets you into a tiny pool. But the, the other um, question I have is I didn't see anything about um, minority businesses or women-owned businesses. Was that in the criteria? You're going through quickly and I couldn't see if that was a criteria re on that we can or should use. Um, so I do not believe that is in the default setup. Um, it is not. Okay. There is, there are state regulations on um, women and minority owned businesses for the construction end, uh, but I don't believe on the OPM uh, or even the designer side. Um, I believe it is, it is something we could add. I believe that's not an uncommon addition. Uh, so I would be, in, I for one would be in favor of adding that as a criteria or criteria criterion, you know, to use. I, I, as would I, um, the state has made a, a, a concerted effort um, in recent years and particularly over the last six to nine months um, to, uh, to increase the participation of, of minority and women owned uh, businesses. So, um, Paul? So I, I agree with those things. I, so I think what we're saying, I think we, we want to call out explicitly the net zero um, designer, whether they have experience or not, but just a commitment to that in their, yeah. like, and, uh, and then I also think it's important. Well, this is not, I don't, I think that the state, you know, MSBA is such a structured process. We're going to use their criteria. We understand that they, they've thought they've done this a million times, but I think what we're trying to do is articulate the values that we're bringing to it and the vet and the priorities. So I think Jonathan and Steve had hit the minority women owned businesses one. I think we, we also talked about the net zero one. I also think it's really important in terms of, um, uh, in terms of high value is working with the, um, the, the key contact for the town and usually that if that's a facilities manager or the you know who it is whoever it's going to be on our on our side um, staff wise um, as they start to go through the process that relationship is really pivotal oh oh one last thing I also think in this day and age we want someone who's very committed to and has a robust um, uh, online interactive ability to interact with the public because that's not something that would have been pre pre thought of but that's going to be the world that we're living in for the next year probably so somebody who's who has some tools in their uh, toolkit that can actually um, energize uh, public communication on this steve so if we can tinker with uh state or the, I'm sorry, the MSBA boilerplate, the, the um, minimum requirement, they gave a choice of a registered architect slash engineer or someone with experience. I would prefer to draw the bar higher so that it's an architect or engineer because I can't see, and I, I don't, you know, I have not worked with OPMs that much, but I can't envision a process where the project director is not one of those two in particular because they will be in a way directing people who are architects and engineers and to, in order to have street creds they would have to have you know at least that same you know that same ex education and experience anthony that uh, that might be statutory but i will look yeah. at that okay those, those years might be in statute but i'll i'll check that uh, Rupert. 
Uh, I really like this discussion. I, I want to say that I, I uh, really believe that the subcommittee uh, will do a great job prioritizing things. Uh, but um, I would like, I would hope that the subcommittee will heavily weight experience working with MSBA in the past because that's going to be really key to guiding us and the project yeah. through. Okay, I, I think uh, unless I'm seeing other hands, I, I'm taking notes. Anthony's a minute taker and we'll have a recording. I'm, I think this covered um, a lot of bases and rather than taking everybody's time, once this meeting ends, I'll search for meeting dates um, for the subcommittee so that we can uh, start to meet now to be ready for the February 11th. And as, as people saw on the agenda, the next our next meeting is February 17th as a full committee. And that will be after MSBA's meeting on February 11th. So, so we will have some work to be done by the subcommittee before then. Um, the next item on the agenda, if people I'm just looking around and people are moving on. I just want a really quick decision, discussion on minutes. Um, if Anthony is willing to continue to be the minute taker until we get our OPM, that would be great. But we haven't. We have two sets of draft minutes and we're gonna get a third for our other meeting. We need to decide on a process of reviewing those. Um, if one possible way to expedite it to, instead of taking full meeting time is, um, and we've done this in the finance committee, is to designate a reader of the draft and give them the authority to approve it, where anyone who sees something in the minutes that they would like to edit sends it in. Um, and uh, if, if we want to go that route, um, I'm hesitant to do this, but I volunteer to be a reader. <laughs> and I'm a, I'm a quick and fast reader. So it would mean that you just send the draft will get posted, and so you'll have it in your packets, and you'll have an opportunity to comment on it, and then I'll just move from draft to final unless there's a big question. Um, Paul? I highly recommend that and move that Kathy be the, the final arbiter of minutes. Okay, there's a motion on the floor. Does Maybe you can just do it by a show of hands. Yeah. Is everyone okay with that process? Yep. Great. So we don't have to take meeting time. Okay, next, um, I think, you know, I'm conscious of, conscious of time. Yeah, Anthony? Um, so according to that uh, packet we got when we started as a committee that had, that so you've been selected to be a committee member in Amherst, every committee has to either designate a revolving secretary or make someone secretary. So if that's true, I'm... I will nominate myself as secret as recording secretary for the committee. And I, I second that nomination or I make a motion that we nominate Anthony to be our secretary. Um, is everyone comfortable with that? Yes, I think so. Thank you, Anthony. <laughs> Over and above. Um, so on, on the agenda, the next would be opening it up for public comments. We do have um, uh, participants. Let me just see. Uh, we have five attendees. Um, anyone who would like to make, I see one hand. Um, I'm not the host for this meeting. So uh, Irina, I see two hands. There are two people with hands up. Um, so someone else would have to promote them. Uh, uh, okay. I think, I think I, Irina, if you unmute yourself, I think you have been brought into the meeting and we're, and again, yes. on public comments, we will listen to you rather than responding, but we will make a note of your comments. Hi, my name is Irene Duhovne. I'm a former, I was in the Fort River School Building Committee and in the sixth grade reconfiguration and other committees. I have a question about the enrollment. Um, the 575 is conditioned to moving the sixth grade um, to the middle school. That report hasn't been presented. It was part of that committee. There was no outreach. There was, there's not a final report. So what happens if it's voted down? Or is it a mute, at this point it's gonna be a mute process in the sense that if we go with the 575, it has to be approved unless 
if it's uh, so the question is, um, I'm thinking that's not going forward. If not, Crocker Farms needs to be expanded and we have to allocate funding for Crocker Farm. Um, if it's voted down, if not the other alternative is the 320. So um, uh, I want to know what's the committee gonna be doing regarding this um, and how we're gonna tackle this because we haven't, the report is not out, it hasn't been outreached. Um, and it wasn't, yes, let's do it. It was, we should present pros and cons and then there are several votes that needs to go ahead before it's been, been approved to move to the sixth grade. Or is it gonna be made just, um, it's kind of putting pressure. I think that vote should have happened before presented the Roman, now it's too late. And we know this year has been weird, but um, at this point, everything is conditioned on that vote for the 575 or extra funding for Crocker Farm Fund expansion for Crocker Farm because otherwise the students don't fit. So that was my comment. Okay, so I, I think we all heard that comment and I'm gonna leave it to Mike um, working with the school committee to get back to you, Irina, um, rather than have- oh, Thanks. With right now, um, but we, we have taken your comment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, that we have another hand up, uh, Tony Cunningham. Okay, Tony, you can unmute. You've been brought in to our world. Thank you. Um, my name is Tony Cunningham. Um, like Irene, I've served on some of the studies that have led up to this point, including the sixth grade advisory board and the Crocker Farm study. And I wanted to um, thank Kathy for bringing up the point from the from the MSBA about how important communication is. Um, I think that's that's vital at this point. And I just I just reviewed some of the engagement the engagement document that was developed for the Fort River study. And I understand that once the OPM is on board, that they will manage the public engagement. But that's um, six months out. So for the next six months, it's on the building committee to make sure that the public is brought along. And some of the points that were developed during the Fort River study were the website, which you mentioned already, having all materials that are considered and produced and those submitted to the MSBA clearly organized on there and easy to find. Um, having an email address so people can send questions. Um, I know Kathy has a Amherst MA address, but is there going to be a address for the building committee so people can target questions that, that are meant for this process. Um, press releases. So there hasn't been anything other than mention at the school, school committee meetings at the last two school committee meetings. There hasn't been anything in the press about this yet. So people don't know, um, it, at least in the bulletin and, and the Gazette, they don't know that we're basically down to either sixth grade moves or we have three schools and, and the size of school that's been approved by the MSBA for a K-6 does not fit the program we have in it right now. So they're really not realistic options or good options at this point. I mean, not that the 575 is a bad option, but it, it's not much of a choice. Um, so making that clear to the community at this point. And then op-ed. So last time around in the Fort River study, both the school committee chairs um, had op-eds in the papers. This time, perhaps you can consider um, joint op-eds between the building committee and the school committee so that you're addressing the curriculum implications as well as the uh, facility and building implications that are under the purview of the building committee. And then finally, the videos of these meetings have been very slow to get posted. This is the first time I set an alarm so I would get up at 7.30 to tune in. The other three meetings, I had to wait for them to be posted and I had to chase them down with the town staff in order to get them posted, all three of them. Uh, the third meeting took almost a month before it was online. So it's not accessible to the community easily to find out what you're discussing. So basically to re reiterate um, what the MSBA told you and what Councillor Shane brought up at the beginning of the meeting is that um, communication is your responsibility until the OPM is on board. And so to try to put some time and effort into that, whether it's um, a an item on the agenda to make sure you're covering all bases, figuring out how to reach different parts of the community that might not speak English, that might not be tuning in, um, that might not be reading the bulletin, 
Uh, you now have those SUFA signs. Could you put something on the SUFA sign to advertise to the people walking by downtown that this is going on? And, and just the key, key milestones that are coming up um, just to allow people to feel like they're, they're brought along and they're not told what the solution is in six months time or, or whenever that sixth grade decision is. I mean, we'll, we'll know what the building is gonna look like once that sixth grade decision is made. So, um, so anyway, I thank you for your work and thank you for getting up so early to have these meetings. And uh, I, I'm hoping this is a very successful process. Uh, thank you for your comments, Tony. Um, and we, we are taking notes and it will be captured. Um, I, I think I don't see any other hands up in the audience. So I think we are uh, coming to the close. There are no matters that weren't anticipated by the chair. It looks to me like there will be some in the future, but right now I don't have any. Um, so um, I want to take an opportunity for anyone to make any other comments. Um, Jonathan was just adjusting his glasses as I do all the time. I'm just looking for any other final comments, um, reminding everyone that the next meeting of this committee is February 17th at 7.30 in the morning. And we will probably, once the subcommittee meets, we'll get out to you how often we're going to be meeting, our best guess of how often the full committee will need to meet in March, April, you know, to get something more, you know, are we going to more than once a month? Um, there'll be a subcommittee meeting, but we'll get some more uh, formalized structure of meetings. We've, right now we're on once a month. Any final comments? I don't see any. Um, I want to thank everyone from getting up this early in the morning. I am an early riser, so it fits me. But if this were my daughter, she would uh, not be a happy camper. <laughs> so thank you all very much. Um, we are at the beginning of um, a, pro a process that will produce a school for the committee community if we are successful, not just for the committee. And thank you all, those of you who volunteered for this subcommittee. I look forward to working with everybody. Have a nice day. I think we are adjourned. I'm just going to do it by hands. <laughs>